Can you hear me in the audience? Yes, we can hear you. Great. So <clears throat> let me just go over the game plan. The plan is <clears throat> we are going to, we have put in six ports. The port placement is similar to a radical prostatectomy, so no different. And uh, we are going to dissect out the external iliac artery and external iliac vein and uh, prepare these two vessels for the transplant. Um, uh, uh, she is a 39-year-old lady with end-stage renal disease due to hypertension and has been on peritoneal dialysis, so the peritoneum has some reaction as a result of that. Uh, we are going to be planting it on the right side. So after the external iliac artery and vein are dissected out, then we would uh, drop the bladder down and prepare the bladder. Um, in patients who have uh, a significant atherosclerotic disease in the external iliac artery, we have uh, used the internal iliac artery in one patient, uh, which works very fine, very well too. Also, we are going to do the back table dissection uh, uh, and prepare the kidney on the on on ice pre uh, before, uh, uh, of course, uh, bringing it into the the recipient. And we have a specific. Um, uh, a jacket that we have created uh, from um, uh, uh, lap sponges that allows us to put ice around the kidney and put the whole thing in the jacket, thereby maintaining, uh, thereby maintaining um, uh, uh, hypothermia during so the operating entire operating with me will be Dr. Polat. How do you spell Dr. it? Dr. Polat. Dr. Polat, he is the chair of uh, transplantation at this hospital. He is a liver and kidney transplant surgeon. He's standing here next to me. <laughs> and he's done over 300 liver Hi, transplants. So he's, uh, please say hello to everybody. Hello. Yeah. What's your pressure set up right, right, right now, Dr. Gill? Uh, just the usual 15. Suction just a little bit out of the field, perfect. Can we turn the room lights down, please? No, don't, just suction a little bit out of the field. Room lights Do down, please. Do you prefer please. a wide dissection or a limited dissection on the artery? Just enough to get our uh, bulldogs on there. Just enough to get the bulldogs on there.
Dr. Jill, by the way, do you do the donors robotically or just simple laparoscopy? Simple laparoscopy. Back clip, please. <laughs> One second. Here you go, back clip. Distal, distal, right there. Good. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Distal, distal. Hit it. I'm sure this is reactive, but nevertheless, let's send this lymph node out for final path. Here you go. There's a little lymph node in right there, so we're just gonna, for documentation purposes. I'm going to put a little quick little wet clip here. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Arvind, what do you think that should do it? Huh? Yeah, no plug artery looks good. Yep. We should raise a little bit of a flap if we can. Thank you. Hmm. So you're going to retroperitonalize the uh, Yeah, we just afterwards. raise a little bit of a flap if it works, but typically, or, or we can just hold it with stitches. Uh, all we have to do is just pex it laterally in case... Uh, so that to minimize chances of rotation or eliminate chances of rotation, but also for subsequent biopsies and stuff. Arvind, keep going. Mm -hmm. yes. I should give people, I should give somebody the stitches, the Gore-Tex stitches. Dr. Gill, uh, yes. have you uh, doing this flap uh, since the beginning of your uh, transplants, or you have uh, 
modified it more later recently on. more recently uh, uh some uh, initially okay. we just Have put you a ever stitch had any... go ahead okay have you ever had any um, intra-abdominal torsion uh, uh, in your no. series, or no. have you ever experienced it? No. I, I know of a case that happened uh, um, from another team. Yes. But uh, we have not seen it yet. Yeah, I think they uh, were not doing anything at the beginning, but then they had experienced uh, uh, intra-abdominal torsion, as you uh, mentioned, and then they uh, modified their technique to do an intra-abdominal flap to prevent it. And yeah. they said it uh, works uh, perfectly. Yeah. Are we reasonable? All good. Thank you, thank you. Okay, fine. I mean, some of the things that we tried in the initial one or two cases, but then stopped, was use of the gel port. We don't think it's necessary at all. A adds unnecessary expense, doesn't help. And so we just put it in through a incision and close the incision. Okay. Have you ever thought like putting the gel port and doing the urethral anastomosis through there uh, open? No, I mean, I, I, I have zero experience with gel port in my life. That's the way I want to keep it. We don't do hand assisted, so we don't really, we're not gel port aficionados. And it's expensive stuff. Yeah, I think it's around four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. So we, we we just don't feel the need for it. We tried it in the first case. It was in the way. It was a production, and didn't help in anything. Did, did yes, you to put it through a financial incision? Financial, yes, financial. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Okay, he should do it. All good, yeah. So that's good, Arvind? Huh? Yeah, drop the bladder, yeah. So now we're going to drop the bladder. So you just connect. You're going to just combine the two ends of that flap, right? Over Correct. the kidney. So that, that's the hope. And if the kidney uh, becomes too big in size, etc., then we will just... Uh, you know, I mean, the, the flaps don't have to touch each other. They just have to. We can just uh, re retain the kidney with stitches. Just using this as an anchor. It's not and a big so deal. Would you consider doing this operation laparoscopically also? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I mean, you know. We thought of doing kidney transplants a long time ago, but never really got excited about it just because, wow, how about that? Really thin. Okay, that takes care of that. Okay, go me, give me a little stitch, please. I was just retracting on the bladder. But no, I, I don't think I would do this uh, laparoscopically. The robot certainly allows you more facility. And that's what we would do. Take this down. Almost ready, yes. Ureter? Okay. Kidney out, okay. So, do, do you want to get started with the irrigation of the kidney? No. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we, we are ready. Yeah, so you can get started on that. I'll join you soon. Huh? 
I will start with you too, yeah. But you, you can get started in perfusing the kidney and everything. Everything is oozing, huh? Yes. I'm using so much electrocautery, but it's still oozing. Renal failure. Dr. Gill, they say for the, uh, uh, if you do robotic kidney transplantation, you have to be very careful while benching the kidney because if you have uh, bleeding after revascularization, that might be uh, troublesome for the robotic very good surgeon point. to control very it good after point. the revascularization. Very good point, do yes. Do you agree with that? Very good point. So in one, in one case, uh, the kidney that uh, I, I got was not well done on the back table. And so little, little stuff was oozing from the hilum, which is difficult. I mean, we, we were able to control it, uh, but it wasn't pretty. So you're absolutely yes, right. You have to do a very meticulous benching, right? Very meticulous, you're absolutely right. Have, have you done robotic transplants? No, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet, but yeah, that was a very good question. Performing robotic transplantation in Turkey. That was a very good question, yes. So that one case taught me that whoever is doing the back table work has to be serious. Right, right. Even open surgically, you have to be, you know, you have to be serious in everything you do, of course, but uh, robotically it can be a real of challenge. Course. Arvind, what do you say? Some more? Are we good? I'm not sure. We should not compromise that. This is a very thin bladder. I was all, all I was doing was retracting it and it burst a hole. Okay, so where is that little hole? She should be, she should be anuric four years, I guess. No urine four years. Okay, guys, give me a quick stitch. Needle driver. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you think, Arvind, you wanna check it out? Maybe we can plug the ureter there? Yeah, show me. Give me the scissors back in that case. We're thinking we may just plug the ureter in here, but that'll depend. Yeah. Yeah, it's in a good location. Let's see if the ureter gets there. Pray to God. All I was doing was retracting it a little bit. I mean, typically we uh, do a nice submucosal dissection, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to create a trough. Seems like that's unlikely to happen here, given it's such a thin-walled bladder. So we will retain this option. If need be, we can just close it at that point. I'm just defatting it now. So 
this is it, huh? Okay, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So that's our bladder is dropped. Our vessels are ready. Our flap is ready. I think we are ready. So our plan would be to first put the bulldog clamps on the renal vein. One here and one there. And perform the venous anastomosis. Then we'll put the third bulldog on the renal vein. Uh, have you ever needed to uh, tie the internal iliac vein uh, in your previous surgeries? And no. if you did so, was it troublesome in robotics? No, we didn't have to do it. That's one of the things, I mean, uh, okay guys, go ahead. Undock and make the incision. That's one of the things with robotics, uh, at least for this anastomosis. When I was doing it open surgically, uh, absolutely we had to do what you just said. On occasion, we had to take the internal iliac vein and control it and then release the external iliac vein up into the field. Robotically, we can just go in and do right. it over there. So in the minimal experience we have so far, 12 cases, we've not had to do it. So did you have any experience with multiple arteries, Dr. Gill? Two arteries each, and so we did an end to side of the branch into, uh, of the smaller artery into the main artery, end to side on the back table, and then uh, anastomosed uh, that to the, the external iliac. In one case, in another case, we did just did a conjoint Wallace type fish mouth and uh, plugged both in together. My question is about the Gore-Tex sutures. Do, yeah. you, uh, uh, do you find them comfortable anastomosing like the proline? Yes, very much so. They it's actually obvious that you're not going to be able to. Go ahead. Yeah, they, there is no way you can use the proline because you are holding the suture, right? Yeah, exactly. So Gore-Tex actually works beautifully. It, it, Gore-Tex works beautifully, runs beautifully, and you can put four or five or six uh, bites and then just pull it. It'll cinch down very, very nicely. So it's a really beautiful uh, uh, suture for minimally invasive surgery, that's for sure. And we are going to create a three and a half inch length uh, suture uh, and tie it uh, together. So it'll be a double armed suture, three and a half inches uh, each. Okay. I'm going to head over now to the uh, donor room and uh, get the kidney ready. Okay. okay. So the ki kidney is in a bag that. Uh, has, it's a four layered bag made of sponge, wrap sponge, okay? Four layered bag. And so the- uh, Regular sponge. Uh, yeah, no, it's not a regular sponge. It, it is a four layered yeah. bag and the kidney goes in the middle and there are two layers of the bag on each side of the kidney into which we put ice. So we have fine slush. Yeah finely crushed ice that is in two compartments on one on each side of the kidney, all within the bag. So the kidney is circumferentially surrounded by ice. You can imagine a brown paper bag, right? Brown paper bag that on each side has two uh, layers, not one. So the kidney goes in the middle and between on each side of the two layers goes in ice. So we have finely crushed ice that is uh, completely surrounding the kidney. And the kidney is going to be in cold ischemia the entire time until we revascularize. And, and so within this ice jacket, uh, we have um, uh, oriented it appropriately such that the renal artery and renal vein are coming out of a little hole. And both the artery and the vein have a stay stitch at its cephalad end, cephalad edge, okay? So it's oriented so that the artery and the vein coming out of this little hole have a stay stitch each on the upper edge of the uh, vein and the artery. And that gives us orientation intraoperatively.
So this is the upper pole right here. That's the lower pole down there. Okay, now we need to find the So flip it over, huh? All good. Yes. Here is the upper pole, blue thread, the ureter is down there, and this is the kidney. Yes. Now we are talking. Vein is well oriented, right? That looks good. Yeah, both are at the upper. Okay, can I have the uh, bulldog clamps now, please? Bulldog clamps, Do you please. Do the patients? Do you hypernize the patients, Dr. Gill? No. Bulldog. Beautiful. One more. That is pneumo. Pneumo peritoneum. Thank you. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, uh, diamond tip. Yeah, start off with that. Okay, needle driver, needle driver, needle driver. Dr. Jim? Yes. Do you usually excision and cuff from the iliac vein? I'm sorry? Give me one second, let me Do just... Do you usually uh, excision uh, vein cuff? Yeah, just a little okay. bit. Okay. Stitch, please, Gortex. Beautiful, thank you.
sick to move the world. Beautiful. Yeah, flush. Give me one second here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Good time. Where are we? The, why is the patient moving? Are we irrigating? Let's go. Okay, come out, that's good.
Cut, please. No, no, not this one, this one, yeah. Perfect. Sorry. Okay, get the other bulldog in now. Yeah, take out the needle, hang on one second. Okay, agreed. Okay, go ahead. Cut. Scissors first. I'm sorry, just cut this thread. Mm -hmm. I have a scissors, don't I? No, I don't. Okay, cut this. Good. Okay, here you go. Bulldog, please. Bulldog. Beautiful. Scissors. Okay, good. Okay. I'm thinking about there. Remove further up. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I just hope the artery reaches. So we'll check it out here. Let me just. Over here. Yeah. I'm going to make the hole right here.
irrigation phase. Okay, very nice. Hmm? Where? That's better? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm just trying to get the hemostasis. It's, it's already is better. Let's see. Okay, good. Needle driver? Do you also use aortic puncture? No. It's just uh, too much. We've tried it. It, it just is not very efficient. Uh, all right, let's go, guys. Got it. Yeah. 
Not is already outside. Is outside? Not is already. Not is already outside, sir. What? Not is already outside. Yeah. Thank you. Not is already outside. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Guys, cut this, please. Mm -hmm. Here you go. See, the knot is outside. So given that there is a lot of plaque disease here, I should go again outside in on the...
So what do you think? Smaller? Uh-huh. Not too tight? Is there a problem with the uh, renal arteries, Intima? No, renal arteries is good.
cut this. I'm going to leave it here. Yeah, leave it here for a bit. Yeah, in a little bit. Yes, we will. Beautiful, go. Here you go. Here you go. Not, a, not yet. What's going on, guys? I know, I know, I know. Your scissors is duller than mine. Easy, easy. No, no, I won't do that. Let me, let me do this. Instead of this, give me, give me another, give me something else. This is too sharp. Indy? Yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing job. So as you can see, Vito, this is a... Uh, Pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, you just basically... In the right hands, looks easy and straightforward. But uh, I, I'm telling you, this is straightforward. Yeah. Uh, it just needs to, as you said, I mean, just follow the v vascular principles and have an excellent expert transplant surgeon. Yeah. Do you think the kidney will produce urine? It better. Quite quickly? Or can no. we see it? Or... Well, we'll see, we are still, t there's still ice around the kidney, you know, we're trying to get that off. Beautiful, yeah. He's getting back his uh, normal color. Yeah, yeah. This is the 12th. What? The 12th case you have done? This is, yeah, this is 12 plus 1, how about that? <laughs> this is actually harder than the anastomosis. <laughs> great, great, great stuff. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you.
That is the ureter right there. We should put some warm water on this kidney to make it look happier. Although it's looking pretty happy now. So normally, um, I go right hand suturing um, outside in on the iliac artery. That's easier to do, but obviously if there's black disease, then you cannot do that. That's why today we switched to left hand suturing and uh, If there has to be a better way to get rid of this stuff. Drink time is up. So I, I just must compliment your name again. Dr. Pollock. Dr. Polat, uh, the, the amazing transplant surgeon here, I mean, he is really amazing, and he did just the most beautiful dissection on, on the back table. As you can see, there is no bleeding happening from the renal hilum at all, so that just attests to his excellence, and, and I'm very impressed. He's done 300 liver transplants here, and I'm already talking to him to come to USC, spend some time together, and let's see if we can do some robotic liver transplants. Just trying to find cases for you, Vito, for the next challenges. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I can see the artery. I thought I had cut all this stuff. Painful though this is, getting this stuff off, it is worthwhile though, because it keeps the kidney cold. That is that stitch of mine. Here we go, here's the needle. Uh, anesth anesthesia, so have we given some Lasix mannitol? Yes. The transplant cocktail? Beautiful. These are these beautiful little clips that he had put in, Dr. Pallott. Here we go. It's nice and pink now. The only thing it has to do is to make urine now. Okay, I'm not going to mess around over there. We shall see here. Hmm? Not yet. It will. Okay, so you think we can just plug it right there? Perfect. That's where we made the hole, inadvertent hole. Yeah, I think this is perfect. I'll Dr. Breda, good job on the harvest. Kidney is looking pink. So thank you. Okay, good. I'm going to spatulate here. 
Should I shorten this a little bit or no? No, okay. I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah. Dr. Jill, you don't put a stent in, right? R yes, routinely. we will. For the anastomosis? Yeah, we will. Oh, you will? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so needle driver, not the, not the diamond tape, just the regular. Suture cut would be awesome if they have it. Give me a, a PDS. First, just a single arm PDS or anything. And then I need the double armed. No, first I want to just put the distal stitch, just to just to anchor it. Beautiful. What do you think? No, so it it you know uh, um, the anastomosis is no different yeah, than open surgery, same. right? Yeah. So your point is very good. What is the advantage? So that's a very good point. We'll see. But at least the basic aspects. I'm discussing with Dr. Platt over here. Uh, the basics of the operation are good. Yeah. And so, so if we can do this for pancreas or, or something, that'll yeah, be so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very important. I agree. I agree. So, so today, I mean, the ischemia time was 20, 30 minutes, something like that. Yeah. I, I should have checked. How much was it? Yeah. Uh, 40, 45 uh, minutes. No, just the anastomosis time was what? So just the anastomosis, 25 minutes. So anastomosis time was 25 minutes. Can I have another needle driver, please? But again, it, it's uh, given that we have ice around it, the kidney is really not taking a hit during that. For the idea of doing uh, pancreas and kidney robotically, you know, uh, pancreas can bleep like hell I know. after revascularization. Very good so point. So you really need a very, very good panky bench. You, yeah. You're absolutely right. So. Uh, obviously, you've done pancreas transplants, and uh, I have had the experience of doing about right, 19 right. or 20 of them. Absolutely, they bleed quite a bit, and that is the concern. But yeah. we should be able to figure out a way. Okay, now give me the double arm, please. But but you can imagine, though, that the that the benefit potentially could be significant if, you know, if, if we can get rid of the incisional morbidity, which is dramatic during pancreas, certainly KP and pancreas alone. I think you are absolutely right. I mean, the, they have very high uh, incisional morbidity, especially uh, all the panc patients, so they would uh, really benefit from that surgery. Yeah. I mean, in Nebraska, when I was doing these uh, pancreas transplants, we would actually put in a zipper into the patient's abdomen after yes. the pan pancreas only, when they were getting OKT3 and all that stuff. We just put in a, literally su su stitch in a zipper and a schedule abdominal washouts uh, you know, twice or thrice a week. I'll yeah, put it on the calendar. I was trained in Northwestern. We were doing there like... Uh-huh. I was trained in Northwestern, and back then we were doing like 50 pancreases a year, uh -huh. and they were all on, at that time, Rapamune and uh, Prograf, and like... I don't remember any patient who doesn't have any, you know, uh, incisional morbidity. Exactly, dramatic it's incisional morbidity. It's a big problem morbidity. with those yeah. patients. Yeah. So we are just I, idle talk here. We'll see how it goes. Nah, I won't be able to do both together. Let's just do one at a time.
So always suturing from the most important part of the anastomosis to the least important part of the anastomosis. So most important is the spatulation here. So that initial stitch that I put in at the base of the ureter is just a steadying stitch, but suturing always, always, always in any anastomosis should go from most important to least important. Too long. It's just catching in this fat, that's the problem. Uh, Dr. Gill, all your robotic cases are living related, right? No cadaveric. No cadaveric yet. Are you planning to do? I think that would be ideal. I mean, you got a long vein, a long uh, everything. I mean, that is ideal. The whole stress is lesser. That would be ideal. Okay, so now we're just putting in the ureter. So we can talk about anything you want to talk about. I mean, it is key. Dr. Not Guild, what do you think about the... Sorry. Go ahead. So what do you think about the learning curve of this operation? Honestly, uh, as I was telling, talking with Vito, I think the learning curve is very short. I mean, you know, uh, I don't mean to sound flippant here, uh, and I certainly don't uh, want to uh, under the uh, under emphasize the imp critical importance of every case just going perfectly uh, because it's you know very very high stakes game. Having said that, I can just tell you, I mean, you know, we've done some minimally invasive surgery, so we are comfortable with the concept. But I can just tell you my team, our team's experience, we became comfortable with this in like three operations, literally. And of course, one bad experience will make me change my view. But a as you can see today, we haven't done hundreds of this. This is literally case number 13. And we've got this down and I personally think the learning curve is short. Of course, given that you have enough experience in general, but this should really be done only by There's been a people with transplant experience, etc. because this is not. 
It's a very non-forgiving operation. Definitely. There has been a compression uh, for those people for the learning curve, and the, uh, they've divided it into three categories. And in the first category, uh, there were surgeons who are experienced in both uh, in just robotics, not in too much in transplantation. And the second group, there were uh, surgeons who are uh, fairly, really experienced in both robotics and kidney transplants. And in this third group, uh, there were surgeons who were experienced in only uh, kidney transplant, not in so much robotics, less than 10 cases for robotics. And so for the, uh, as a result, the worst ones were the last group. And so, uh, but it, uh, the final verdict was on that. It really didn't uh, make big uh, difference, but the problems were mostly encountered in this group of uh, surgeons. Hmm. I'm sorry, which group? Uh, in the group uh, who are experiencing transplant, but not in the robotics. Yeah, of course. The worst group was that. Of course. <laughs> Here you go. I think one important thing with the robotics is the advertisement of the procedure. I mean, when you compare, I would say, the robotics and the open procedure, uh, the papers might come out like there is no big difference in terms of kidney transplantation. But I think advertisement is a big issue, right? I mean, uh, so you can say that we do it robotics and patients uh, like it. So you can get more patients if you do the uh, operation uh, robotically. What do you think about it? Well, I, I mean, you know, your critique is valid. Your critique is valid and there is no question that Robotic surgeons tend to tend to get too enthusiastic about things too quickly, and I'm putting that kindly. Uh, I don't see any yet. Let's put a stent in now. So, so let me just get a couple of stitches in here, then we'll chat. <laughs> Stent coming from lower down, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, double J. Too high, go further down, lower down. They don't have a two millimeter? Okay, fine. What is this? What kind of stent is this? There is no guide wire? Okay. Wait on, wait on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Go. So we don't need this, right? I'm going to cut this, correct, guys? Here, get this. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Good job. So your question about marketing was a very good one, and I agree that uh, in robotic surgery, we tend to be a little too enthu enthusiastic a little too quickly. But welcome to the brave new world, right? I mean, more important than writing All papers right. now is, uh, more important than writing papers now is right, having a good website, I guess. I'm being <laughs> cynical here. I mean, we might end in, at a point that the, all the patients would demand, like, I would want to have a robotic kidney transplantation. Yeah, I'm hoping, though, that uh, you have to, at the end of the day, trust the, you know, the marketplace is a, is a real entity. In other words, uh, to say that this entire robotics thing is just marketing, I think, is uh, unfair. Because if indeed that's all it was, by now it would have died and gone away. Um, there, there is value to it, and I can just tell you personally that I feel it is excellent surgery and uh, allows us to do some very intricate maneuvers Transplant is just one of them, but even prostates, I mean, it's just a whole different ball game and partials unclamped and cable thrombi and all this stuff. I, I really feel as time goes on, this is the future of surgery. And it is not just marketing driving it, but just the inherent advantages that it gives. And this is just the start. I mean, uh, when, when we start seeing intraoperative image guidance, which is literally around the corner, when we start seeing <coughs> infrared imaging and uh, Firefly is just a baby, but the real stuff, molecular, tissue specific, it's already happening. When all that stuff comes to bear, then you can just kiss goodbye to... Open surgery will always, always, always have a place, as it should, but it will be... At least that's my opinion, that... Robotic surgery is for real, there's no question about it. So as you can see, in the entire vascular anastomosis of two vessels, and in the anastomosis of the ureter, not one time was the mucosa grabbed. Not one time was the endothelium grabbed. Not once. A and I mean, that, that's, that's what surgery is about. Would you agree? Uh, definitely. I think this is a very delicate surgery. Only thing I'm grabbing is the bladder mucosa, never the ureteral. Bladder mucosa doesn't care. We are not particularly rushing anything, yet it's coming along nicely. 
an ast to anastomosis time was 20, 25 minutes. So open surgically, we could have done it maybe five minutes faster. But the same were the critiques about prostatectomy. It's all marketing, it's all marketing. Well, guess what? 80% plus of prostates now are robotic. If, if really it was just marketing, then I can't imagine anything in the marketplace that is more expensive than something else and is actually worse, and then it's, it's still sustaining. I mean, it will die off very quickly. Do you pull the Foley on post-op day three? I'm sorry? The Foley catheter. Do you pull the Foley catheter on post-op day three or shorter? No, um, longer. The bladder catheter? Yeah, five to seven. How long do you keep it? Five, five to, seven to seven days, days? Yeah. And it's the same for the open or just for the surgery? Same for the open, no different. Need to okay. monitor the urine output and everything and go. Okay, do we have some surgery cell or no? The vein? Okay. We'll see the vein here in one second. No, it doesn't look like soft to me. No. Let me see. It's got nice turgor. Nice turgor. Suction here, gentle, very gentle. Vein looks good. Yeah, that's the vein, looks good. Yeah, yes, yeah. Another surge cell, please. Both vein and artery look good. Kidney looks good, it really feels good. There's no, feeling is excellent, it is not overly tense, it is not soft, it is, it is normal. And if we have an ultrasound, we can do the resistive index. Let go. I think it will open up here in short order. And it's globally perfused, so.
Yes. Okay, stitch. That's the ipsilateral ureter, right? Upper pole? Yep. Very good call. Very good call. That's where it wants to go anyways. One second. Uh -huh. In the air, good. Can I have one more stitch? Yeah, one more stitch. And this is important because we don't want the kidney torquing. I have heard of one case where it did torque. And also for subsequent biopsies, etc., we got a kidney, we should be stabilized. Okay, good. Wet clip, please. Okay, we're done. Put a drain and we're done. Uh, Dr. Gill, you didn't uh, do a uh, anti-reflux tunnel as far as I saw, right? Like yeah, the lip it, it, technique. not in this one because the bladder was really thin and uh, the, uh, you know, I made that inadvertent hole into it. So we just used that. Um, but the fact that it was so thin uh, suggests to me that it's going to be difficult to have enough muscle 
And, you know, so I didn't see this as a very nice uh, juicy detrusor. But typically, we are able to very nicely do submucosal dissection, raise the flaps on both sides, and do an anti-reflux. So typically, it goes very nicely. This, this bladder just did not lend itself to it. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, operating with the team here and Thank with Dr. Plato. It is a real pleasure. Real pleasure.